Time and time again, the president campaigning on this promise to the American people in his push for Obamacare. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan, period. A promise broken hundreds of thousands, if not millions of times over, as more insurance cancellations keep people pour, keep these pouring into mailbox. We're live in D.C. bringing you the very latest on the Obamacare fiasco. Back with me now, Doug Holtzegan from the American Action Forum. And joining us is Republican Senator John Barrasso of Wyoming. Senator, I'll Thank start you. with you. You know, we, we've been talking about this broken promise. And essentially, Democrats have said, you, you can't complain about the law. It's the law of the land. But if it was sold on bad information, what does that mean? Well, I think the president intentionally had these lines designed to deceive the American people so he could force through in a party line vote uh, a health care law that I think is bad for patients as well as the doctors and nurses who take care of them uh, as well as the taxpayers and this uh, the problems with the website are only the tip of the iceberg right. uh, the law itself is fatally flawed in terms of keeping your doctor in terms of uh, all of these uh, cancellations of policies uh, that are being I announced. I want to show some numbers on that right now because we've been running a tally on the cancellations and I've got something like I think it's 1.7 million right. if you add up all these numbers from all over the country we're seeing hundreds of thousands of people getting cancellations every day and in the testimony today Sebelius was saying those aren't cancellations if they're not cancellations what are they they're cancellations and there are more to come uh, because there'll be more and more of these so-called uh, grandfather plans where they'll have to make enough changes to comply with the law that, that they'll, be, they'll be canceled they're no longer legal for sale and that's that and it's because the law is so, uh, so um, strong on that front. Let's and the regulations that they wrote afterwards, because right. you have a, a tower of regulations about <laughs> seven feet tall, and they really got very restrictive in the regulations. When the president said, if you like your insurance, you can keep your insurance, it, it really only if the White House likes your insurance, That's right. you can keep That's your right. insurance. And if the White House doesn't like your insurance, you can't keep it. Essential health benefits. I want you to hear from Cory Gardner. He's a congressman who got up in today's hearing and said, Here's my cancellation notice. I just got it. Listen to this. This is the letter that my family got canceling our insurance. We chose to have our own private policy back in Colorado so we could be in the same boat as every one of my constituents. And yet my insurance policy has been canceled. The White House website says, if you like your health plan you have, you can keep it. Did I hear it wrong? So... You hear the congressman say he's lost his health insurance. He's very upset. He went on to say to Kathleen Sebelius, I think you should be enrolled in Obamacare. Why aren't you enrolled in Obamacare? What did you make of that exchange? Well, I think that every employee of the White House ought to be in, involved and in, in enrolled in, in, Ob in the Obama health care law and ought to have to buy insurance on the exchanges. Uh, none of them. They all have exemptions from this, the health care law. I think they all ought to be uh, involved. But he's right, and it's not just people are losing their coverage. Then if they have to go and buy insurance, they're getting hit with a sticker shock, Jerry, because they're seeing it's turning out to be a lot more expensive. Remember the president promised easier to use than Amazon, the website, cheaper than your cell phone bill, and you can keep your doctor. And the American people feel deceived by the lines of the president. Exactly and the last right. one's really important because the way they've tried to keep prices down, and there's a lot of sticker shock already is to have very tight networks that means you probably won't get to see your doctor or go to the usual hospital I think we're all headed for RNs I think at the end of the day I want you to hear something from Congressman Lee Terry because another issue for me has been when are we going to get details when are we going to know understand how many people are being enrolled it's an open question here's what he had to say today that should be a pretty reliable number just uh, on the surface. The system surface. isn't so you... functioning, so we are not getting that reliable data. So the secretary says, essentially, we don't know because we're not getting reliable data. Doug. I find this the least believable in a long list of things that aren't believable. That's not true? Pick up the phone. Insurance companies in America know who they have signed up. If they've they? completed a, a, a contract with somebody, they, it's gone down to be billed out for premiums and they're gonna know. So ask the insurers, how many of you signed up? How many of you signed up? Add them up, you'll get an answer. I don't think the insurers have good information either. They, they may not have the right information about who they've signed up, but they're gonna know how many people have made it through the process. They have to. And our insurance commissioner in the state of Wyoming, he has tried to log on to the website every day 
since October 1st has not gotten through as of this past week. Uh, Lisa Murkowski, senator from Alaska, told a number of us today they've made the calls. Uh, there are three people in the state of Alaska who've been able to sign up. Let three. me tell so, you, uh, one thing that, that was almost missed in the coverage today, because we weren't in the room, we were watching it on TV, they had a video up of the website. The it was time. not available. <laughs> you couldn't sign on yeah. during the very congressional hearing that is investigating why the, this website is not up. This would be, this is like prime time for the administration. If you were ever going to get this website to work, it would be during this right. congressional hearing. It did not happen. And if you're ever going to try to convince young, healthy individuals to yes. sign up, they're they're Young they're leaving savvy. this. I mean, these are the people that have to sign up for the financing of the whole program to work. They're depending on 2.7 million young people to pay more for more insurance than they need to pay for older, sicker people. Right. And that's I mean that's the, what this whole thing is built upon. They've touted some numbers. You've heard the president, for example, say Oregon 60,000 people. Right. Those are all Medicaid recipients. Those are not people. The Oregon Exchange is not yet open. And so they're, they're also not being clear about who's in what category. Uh, it's, it's been a, a very, very, very Quickly, untransparent role. If you had to guess the proportion of people who are signing up now who are actually Medicaid rather than Obamacare, what would it be? Uh, I'd guess 90 percent. We're going to have to leave it there. Senator Doug, thanks for being with us. Thank Great you. job. Fascinating Appreciate conversation. Really us. appreciate your time. Thank you.